If you watch my channel, then you may be aware that I've just started a project for reproducing the main board in this. This is a Fluke 9010A micro system troubleshooter. And uh, as well as the main board, I also want to reproduce the display board and the uh, keyboard. There's no point just doing the main board, otherwise um, there'd be no way to complete a build of one of these. You need the keyboard and the display. And um, thanks to everyone that's um, responded and sent me information about the display and the keys. I'm currently following up a very promising lead for some keys that may suit the purpose. They won't be ideal, it won't look exactly the same, uh, but it should give us a fairly good compromise between appearance and the functionality. I really want to stick to mechanical keys. I find um, membrane keys very tedious to use on a piece of test equipment like this. It's much nicer just to be able to hit a mechanical key uh, rather than having to carefully position your finger on a, uh, a membrane key and make sure you pressed it. Uh, you can of course get um, tactile domes etc fitted but that will start to push the price of the panel up. It's not really the cost of the panels themselves that are the issue, it's the tooling required and the minimum order quantity. So for example I might have to buy 500 just to get one made and um, obviously there's not going to be a particularly high demand uh, or at least I'm not aware that there will be a, a demand um, that will make it sensible to go that route. Um, so that's where I am with that project at uh, the moment. I'll post an update on that fairly soon. This video is about a kind of side project that I'm doing at the same time. Now, I wasn't going to post any videos on this, but because of the interest in the uh, main board project, I've decided to post uh, videos on this uh, project as well. Again, it's for the 9010. And a few months ago I posted um, a video on how to modify the uh, tape drive to accept different sorts of tapes. The tapes for the uh, Fluke, the original tapes, are getting ridiculously expensive like everything else. Everyone's jumping on the uh, bandwagon, pushing up prices, and it just makes it um, impractical to try and use the original tapes. Um, these tapes work fairly well once the drive has been modified. The only problem is that uh, these tend to be very variable in supply and um, although some work fine, if you buy from a different supplier, well they have the same part number, they're different tapes. Uh, the changes or differences don't seem to matter for the machine these are intended for, uh, but in this tape drive uh, it stops them working. And something I've been meaning to look at for quite a long time is to replace the tape drive entirely with a solid state um, alternative. So it really be a small memory card. I had initially intended to use an SD card or something like that, but um, I don't think we need to go to that extent. We don't need that much storage capacity. And so what I'm probably going to do is use a small memory chip and it will just effectively be built-in storage for programs. I may make the cards pluggable so they can be swapped but uh, chances are there will be enough capacity on it for uh, probably as many programs as uh, anyone's going to want to sensibly store. So the next question of course is how to go about doing that. So I'll just quickly uh, pop this top off, it's already dismantled for the other project of course, so I'll get that out of the way. And what we have is a fairly simple tape drive system. Now, Someone commented that there isn't much inside the Fluke and that's true and the reason there doesn't appear to be much inside the Fluke on the main board is because uh, Fluke made use of devices like this. So this is uh, an 8041 and these are very interesting devices and it's one of the reasons why the component count on the main board for the Fluke is, is quite low. These are actually self-contained microcontroller systems. They're quite similar in their overall functionality to a microchip PIC in that they have a peripheral interface and various ports, but they also have built-in EEPROM and built-in RAM. And so this actually is a small uh, computer system, so the Fluke main board just sends a command to the tape drive, and this is also used in the display and keyboard and it just sends a command saying do this and then this system takes care of that and it does mean that the main board doesn't need to have uh, that much on it 
but it doesn't mean if you want to replace something like the tape drive it's not just as simple as streaming data into a memory chip because there is intelligence built into this uh, tape drive interface. So we'll have a quick look at the schematic for that system. So you probably won't be able to see this very well on camera but what this uh, board consists of is the main controller and then there is some very simple analog interface but digital stuff just for switching but most of this is for controlling the motor and the solenoids and the read write head and then the actual tape drive mechanism plugs into this connector. So when you're looking at something like this there are various options we can either make something to replace the tape drive mechanism only and then take the analog signals and feedback uh, what amount to analog signals. That would work fine and I kind of toyed with the idea of doing that but I don't really like that as a, a concept. It would work and it would be the simplest approach but um, especially if I want to use this to either fit to a flute that doesn't have a tape drive or replace a faulty tape drive then it wouldn't be a very good solution so it would be fairly self-limiting. Um, we could then replace all the electronics up to and including the tape drive mechanism so in other words we get rid of everything downstream of uh, this device and that's possibly the way I'm going to go so basically replace all of this uh, all we need is to take uh, data that's been fed out from this device and stream it into a, a memory chip and again various ways we can do that but the easiest way is just to stream the data as it's been represented and encoded by this chip so it has a certain bit pattern for a naught and a different bit pattern for a one uh, but that could just be represented as uh, binary zeros and ones uh, with an underlying clock rate uh, that would uh, simulate the, uh, the tape drive uh, another option of course is we could get rid of this device entirely and interface something directly to the uh, Fluke 9010A bus itself so we wouldn't need this device. Uh, this device incidentally has code in it, uh, the same with the display and keyboard uh, device. I do have the binary um, files, the binary code for this so it wouldn't be a big problem if I decide to retain this but really I'm looking at the, the various options that I have now. Uh, what I'm doing at the moment is I've taken the binary file from this device and if we look at this device, as I say it's a very interesting um, device and it's uh, as I say, a forerunner really to microchip picks and that sort of thing so if you're familiar to using microcontrollers then this is a very similar idea, it's um, almost identical in its concept um, does have resident um, program of course that's what uh, makes it do something and that's what I'll be looking at first uh, and of course because this is uh, kind of a proprietary device then the instruction set is fairly specific to the family of devices but the instruction set is in the data sheet so what I can do is go through and uh, disassemble this I could do it manually, um, but there are disassemblers, decompilers around. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't find one that supported the 8041, but I did find one that supports the 8048, and that has exactly the same instruction set as the 8041. So what I did is I used that, I decompiled it, and I've now got the decompiled listing of the code that sits in this device. So that's the uh, code that runs in this. So what I can do now is go through this listing. I'll do what you've seen me do on previous videos on other projects. I'll go through, annotate this, find out what each block of code is doing. There's not very much of it. There's only about sort of 20 pages of this, so it's not particularly big. Um, we'll go through, see what it's doing, and see how it's interfacing and how it's talking to the fluke. And it might be that it would just be easier to reproduce this uh, behavior in something like a PIC. Replace this device with a PIC and then interface it to a memory chip. And 
obviously what would change here is the, the interface side of things would stay pretty much the same so as far as the fluke is concerned it, it would think it's talking to uh, a standard tape drive um, but what the pig would do is it would reinterpret that information and rather than trying to drive a magnetic tape and store the data and read the data it would just put that data directly into a memory chip so that's the plan at the moment the next step as i say is to go through this if anyone's already done this and already has uh, this um, worked out and know exactly how this code works and uh, has a commented version of this then i'd much appreciate uh, a copy of that if not i'll work my way through this and then once i've uh, got all this sorted out and i know what the code is doing uh, then i'll go on to the next video in this series and uh, decide exactly what the approach is going to be for this project but as I say the idea is to completely replace this module it will plug into the same connector on the Fluke motherboard uh, and it will get rid of the mechanical uh, tape drive it'll get rid of this interface card and we should have a fairly simple device now this is not a, a reproduction it's not meant to be a, a vintage uh, reproduction of anything it's just meant to give us some functionality to be able to use uh, the fluke in such a way that I can store programs uh, in a sensible way on it at the moment it's just getting too expensive and difficult uh, and also the the tapes are fairly fragile they're quite easy to damage and uh, although you can use an RF232 with these it's a bit of a pain having to keep doing that I'd much rather it had built-in storage for the programs and uh, that's the idea if we go with maybe a one megabit um, memory chip that'll give us enough storage for uh, maybe 50,000 lines of code which should be enough uh, if we need to go more then we can just put a bigger memory chip in so that's the plan at the moment uh, as ever comments welcome um, if you do have any information on the uh, code for the tape drive then please let me know as i say i have the binary file i have decompiled it it'd just be nice to have the uh, source code listing if anyone's got a copy of that